This show is sponsored by Lila Arboretum Society. Okay. Hi, I'm Vi Gogol, and this is In the Garden, and I'm here with Emily Kaner, and we're in her front yard, and uh, we're going to discuss some of the bushes and specimen trees that she has in her yard. Uh, the, the taller uh, tree there. That's a Don Redwood. Ah, that you don't see that in everybody's yard. No, and that's why I decided I wanted one in my yard. <laughs> yeah, it, it loses its leaves in the winter, even though it's considered an evergreen. So it's unique in that respect. And then, what are the purple bushes along the, the fence over there? Is that purple those, plum? Those are ornamental cherries. They're, cherries. Yeah, oh, yep, the bloom pink in the spring and then they look good and not green all summer long so it adds more color oh yeah I love it people should consider the color of the foliage of plants for their garden yeah and that's a lot of what I've got in here too yeah and it's it's really nice Let's run down. and then when Dave turns around there he's gonna see the beauty berry I think or are we gonna do the Coosa dogwood that is a coosa, isn't it? Yes, that's a coosa dogwood. Um, and then there's a um, purple beauty berry right in front of him. And then there's lilac and a viburnum in the back against the house. That's... And you got bird baths for the birds. And then there's a rhododendron by the front of the house and there's um, should be a bunch of four o'clocks coming up. They like heat and hot and nasty summer weather. So now that it's finally that type of weather, they're finally starting to grow, but those are all from seed. Oh. They were volunteers when we bought the house and they've been here ever since. So I let them go. And this tree here is a river birch? Yep, that's a, a river birch. And you got three clumps, three Tree. It's a clump of three, but it was all in one, one pot together. You know, I bought a sizable one and put it in, and over a couple of years, some of the two of the stalks or the whatever you call them, two of them died out, and all, all I've got just one tree. Yeah, this one was in like a five-gallon pot with three of them, and it's. I wish mine had. I, I like the three three uh, in a in a pot. Stuff. And I don't recognize this plant down here. Those are Ozark sundrops. Oh, sundrops. Oh, so okay. They're, they flowered. They just finished flowering. Sometimes they flower later into the season. Um, but these don't seem to do so well with my heat. So they flower earlier and then they're done. Okay, now we, and then we have rose bushes here. Are these the knockout ones? Yeah, these are all knockout roses. And those are double. No, they're 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 single. They're, yep, they're just the straight up original yeah. knockout rows. Yeah, we're uh, a little distance from them, but I thought for sure those were double. They're so a lot of color there. Yeah. And what is the uh, the foliage that plant? The yellow is a um, evergreen. It's a false cypress, and so it stays that color year-round and can tolerate the heat and sun. Okay, I think we're ready to go to the backyard, aren't we? Okay. We have to yes, I grow these for my parents. I don't care for tomatoes, but I have a good spot for growing them. So yeah, yeah it's nice and sunny I, here. I said, I'll grow them if you come by and pick them and eat them, and so they do but it gets good hot sun against the house at this time of the year, so yeah, they just take off. Too. Okay, let's go through the gate. Rain barrel. 
There's a rain barrel. Oh. <laughs> Dave spotted something here that he wants. He wants to see the rain barrel. This is set up to catch the rain then that comes off from the roof. And they're just um, two barrels that I got from a car wash that was throwing them away. And my brother was able to rig up a system and catch it. And so I use the rainwater then particularly to water the tomatoes, but then the rest of my yard when there's rain. Okay, now we can go through the gate. Coming through the gate, we see, now I'm trying to think of the, the common name, tri, oh, Mexican, Mexican sunflower. sunflower. <laughs> took a while now, are those the ones that get just that tall? Nope, that'll get three times that tall. Six feet. Yeah. I got three packages of seed in my purse, but I, I didn't get out to the VA to give them to her. She she wants them for the butterfly garden, but we can never find the tall seeds for the tall ones. Yep, they love the heat and they'll take off and be as tall as the fence. And the butterflies and love the, them. All the insects love them. Oh, not just butterflies. Huh? What's this blue flower that I think we got a, a, a a dark blue butterfly bush, but this one with the blue flowers all over it is gorgeous. It's a wildflower that I found on the side of the road on a vacation up north and liked it. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll see if it will grow in my yard. And so lo and behold, it decided to grow and now it's taking over and it seeds prolifically. And it's going to probably finish blooming here in a day or two. It flowers earlier in the summer and then I just trim it all the way back to the ground. And Does it sprout again and bloom or no? Just next year? It probably will seed from that. It reseeds so fast um, in this rock area without any real soil that I, I don't let it go too crazy because otherwise it'd be taking over the whole yard. And here's a, a, a beautiful hydrangea. Yeah, there's a got a hydrangea and some um, what do I, um, milkweed and then That's just some extra random plants that have shown up between my yard and my parents' yard. I see a, a, a dogwood. I there's see. a dogwood and a couple different lilacs, lilacs in there yeah. that I'm hoping will turn into adult plants sooner or later. Boy, since I was out here, some of these uh, trees or bushes have taken off. Well, there's a, a, a beautiful mallow in there. I don't know. Do you know the, what that really is called? The purple? It's a hollyhock. Again, it's another one that yeah. I got from up north on a vacation up at a golf course. I asked them if I could have a plant that I liked its color, and they didn't know its specific name or anything, so they said you can have a plant. And so again, it's just in the rocky area of my bed, not intentionally planted there, and it's grown, so I've let it go. And, and does it reseed, or yes. can you? Yes, it's, it reseeds, and I've got a couple that are I'm letting go, and but again, if I don't keep after weeding right there. Now that is a part of, part of your your maintenance free stuff. Yeah, that's okay. That's. We need to, to let Dave get where we can, he can shoot all around. And, and after he, we identify what we're saying, that one's got, is that cranberry viburnum? That's a double file. That's a double file, okay. And so, yeah, it's, it looks kind of like a, um, there's red Hoosa, berries on it. Hoosa dogwood when it's in, in bloom, but then it gets the red berries on it at this time of year and so it, yeah, your, your mother said when in the spring when you come out here on all these th these uh, shrubs are in bloom and it's just absolutely yeah my, have you taken any pictures of it when it's all in bloom i have pictures as the season has gone gone on is there some way we could uh i can probably yeah yeah because flat for flowers my yard's probably best in the spring um, with the viburnums that I've got, and then I've got a um, service berry. That's the one where the little blue thing is down yep. there? Yeah, there's next to it. To our left. Um, and that flowers in the spring, and then it gets berries that the robins scarf down in about two days, and then it it'll, has fabulous fall color. 
which is also part of what I've got is a lot of color in the fall, but not many leaves then and stuff to clean up and rake up. Okay, and there's some butterfly weed down there and some, some, uh, I've got butterfly sun... bushes, lilacs, and what's, it, what's the bush be right behind the pot, potted flower down there? The lilac. Is that a lilac back there? Yeah. Okay. And then um, the, the evergreen is a um, Canadian hemlock. And, and it was shaped when it was young? Is that what they do? Because mine's grow, growing crazy. That was one that we had gotten from the landscape company that had helped with the yard. And so we just said that's what we wanted. And so I'm, I'm not sure how old it was, and but it was from there. They got it and brought it in several years ago when we had the yard done. Okay, moving along to the to the left there, what is that? that a, that's another viburnum. It's a um, blue blue muffin. Or, oh yeah, I see that one in the. And it when it's done flowering, its berries are dark blue. Um, they're harder to see. They're not as. Um, Obvious and showy, but the, do the, the birds, red viburnum. Do the birds like them? They don't like them as much, or they're just further in, and it's a more dense shrub, so you don't see the birds as much as you do in the. That could be. Uh, my uh, cranberry viburnum gets red berries all over it, and the birds don't even look at it. Yeah. And then I have a dogwood next to it. Now is that a regular dogwood or? Yeah, that's just. Um, the beautiful ones that. Yeah, it's pink flowered. Oh, it's a pink flowered one. If it flowers like you it should. Dig that along the, in the woods down in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Yeah. There were seedlings all over that that highway that goes from Herndon, Virginia, on down into the Carolinas. And then, of course, we know this willow bush. I can't. And, and then that's a Nashiki willow. A Nashiki. And it's um, it's a, more of a shrub. It's supposed to only get about 10 to 12 feet tall and wide. Um, I usually trim it down and leave a couple of stems on the base and two or three feet up and it grows from there each year. So you can either trim it far back and contain it in its own to what you want for its shape or let it go and see what happens and yeah, I saw what I, happens and I had to take the chainsaw and I cut it right <laughs> down and now right now it's beautiful so this year it got lucky and it's beautiful looking good and then got some hanging hanging basket there is it a bird bath no nope, it's a bird feeder feeder okay yep. the tree is or the bush is blocking my view and uh and then there's a, um, a flowering hydrangea um, next to it. It will flower late August um, and be a standard. It usually does fairly well. It likes heat and tolerates. And for a hydrangea, it takes far less water than most of them. So it's. I left mine in a pot over winter. Beautiful. <laughs> All coming, all just broke out and bloomed a couple of days ago. And then the butterfly bush. Yep, and then another viburnum blueberry, so that there's kind of some symmetry from one side of the yard to the other. Uh, and then there's an arborvitae with a f some spring annuals down below, so I, they're long since passed and not showy over there now next to. The, um, a lilac, and then what's that? That light, lighter green uh, bush to by the uh, near the evergreen. That's um, bleeding heart. The little little guys. No, the tall one. Oh, a or lilac? it's it's about this tall, right next to the just beyond the lilac. There's. Um, He's looking at the plants in front of the lilac now. That's a dwarf butterfly bush. That's oh. really low. Then there's the lilac by the birdhouse. And then underneath the flamingo that's really small by the rock, there's um, 
bleeding hearts. I was going to say, are, from here, it looked to me like bleeding hearts, but yeah. we're quite a ways away from it. Dave's yeah. right on top of it. So they're, they're starting to fade away now since they bloom early in the season, and it's way too hot for them. Yeah. And now that the next birdhouse up to the left, uh, what's that? It's a different shade of green. I like the use of, your use of foliage colors. It's a summer, summer sweet ruby uh. spice. It flowers. Um, it'll probably be flowering in the next week or so. And They're, hummingbirds like that, do they? Or hummingbirds love it, um, and it smells fabulous. And it's a low maintenance kind of nobody. You don't really see it. It's not a common, common shrub. But it, and then it has yellow foliage for the fall. Now, what did you say that evergreen was? Is that another? That's not a hemlock, hemlock is it? A Canadian hemlock. It, it's the one with the white tips. Uh, they're the same variety, the one that's on the corner of the yard. You know, it didn't stand out to me over there like it does in this spot. Yeah. And I, and I can, I. This the, one's the, growing out further. Yeah. It's growing wider where the one further away wants to go straight up. And I don't know if that's part soil, part sun. I can't remember the, the variety that the, the white chipped ones are. Yeah, no, this one's just a... Just a regular straight one? Straight old Canadian hemlock. I wanted to just looking at the other one to do a comparison there. And then what is the white flowering bush down there? That's another hydrangea, that's quick fire, um, a newer variety. Um, it's coming into its prime right about now. It'll flowers white and then they'll fade into pink. And hold on until you cut them off or they fall off. And then the spiky flowers next to it, I'm... There's delphinium in with some milkweed and some other um, annual and perennials that I just made a little flower oh. garden area out of. Yeah, and you got some of your collected stones. Yes, I have rocks everywhere. Okay. And when we, this is this your, your garden equipment shed? Yes, that's where all the weapons are kept. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> that's what all the, the tools of the trade. Uh, Weapons because they, the bushes know what's coming. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, what is the one in the middle, the tree in the middle there? The, the tree in the middle is a paper bark maple. Oh, good. Um, and then on either side there's um, hydrangeas. And, then and those are the ones you can put uh, the garden sulfur on and they turn blue? They're supposed to, but I haven't made it work yet. They do what they want to do and they take a ton of water. So maybe between all my watering, I'm diluting the rest of it, but they, they do flower. It's just, they, well, I see that one's trying to turn blue. Yeah, it's... But and, pink is pretty. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll take any flower. And then there's um, some Veronica's in front of it. Um, and then some hellebores mixed in as well. So you, do you like the hellebores? I do like the hellebores. And I, I noticed surprisingly they flower well for me even though it's not in shade, but they again do require a ton of water and being right where it's at right. next to the hose. Yeah, and with the hydrangeas needing water, you they all get put it in the right plant in the right place. Yeah. Got some potted plants around the that this one's got shade. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's nice. I've never seen one up close. Yeah, the yard didn't have any shade when we took down the dying trees and redid the landscape. And so I, I was bound and determined that there was going to be shade somewhere in this yard that, so that I could at least enjoy some of being outside. So I just have a bunch. That's about my the extent of my potted plants. And you're keeping the, the pansies going because sometimes at this time they start drying up. No, pansies are hardier than than people give them credit for. Yeah. They're, there's nothing wimpy about them. They're tough plants. They just like moisture and a little sh shade and the heat in summer. So if I keep them in pots this time of year, they'll, and they'll mostly survive and then I can put them back out in the yard come fall. And 
the pink little wallflowers over there. It's a gomfrina. It's a new variety that I have found. And that's year. an annual. And it's an annual. Yep. It's very pretty. Are you going to dry them? I probably will. I'm going to see how tall and full they get, and I'll probably save some of the seeds just to see what happens. If most of luck, I don't have well good luck with seeds, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, thank you very much for. Uh, allowing us to come and videotape your garden. Thank you for letting the people come and see it. But one thing we didn't talk about, how you've created this out here to be more maintenance free. Yeah, this isn't necessarily a, a flower bed, so to speak, in the traditional sense when people think gardens. I've designed it so that it would be low maintenance and that trees and shrubs are in their place and won't get unruly and five, 10, 15 years, that this will be pretty much what it is now and I'll let it fill out and it'll f grow, but I don't have to do much and as far had, as making You had all the weeds out before you put the mulch down and then how much mulch did you put down? There's a good four inches of mulch all, all over the yard so that it's the it keeps the moisture in very well and I've only ha had to do minimal weeding. That's and great. people need to know that. I hope your, your uh, garden guides at the tour will remember that to tell people. That it, mulching, whether it's a bed like I have or a true annual perennial flower bed, even vegetable gardens, mulching is key. And the thicker, the better. Yeah. It'll save you time, effort, frustration, um, and it just looks better. And then I can enjoy it sitting here looking at it rather than screaming, color singing, coloring you know, like it when I down at with weeding. A, with a glass of tea or lemonade, and next thing I know, I'm pulling weeds and the lemonade is hot. Hot. Yep. <laughs> yep. And they're done that one too. <laughs> Janet Matanovich used to say, rope off 10 square feet and don't move out of that spot until you've got it ready. It all, all your weeds are gone, you've done everything you want to do, then move on to another 10 square feet. I have a bucket that I take, and when a bucket is full, you're done. You have to get up and move to dump it or else you make a bigger mess, and that <laughs> tries to contain the nonstop weeding issue. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks again. I really hope a lot of people come to see your garden this weekend because I think it's really great that you have created what just about everybody wants, um, low maintenance. Low if you maintenance. would like to become a master gardener, call 969-0270, extension 116. If you have questions or suggestions about this show, call 963-1448. Access Vision. Your voice, your community.